Maar I'm Donny and I'm ill. Welcome along everybody, hope you had a great weekend and enjoyed last week's episodes. Today I'm drinking Lemsip Max Lemon, cold and flu. The thing you get with Lemsip I think is a really, a really powerful lemony taste, lemony aroma and a really unexpected lemony aftertaste. You wouldn't think you'd get that with a thing that's entirely lemon and really disgusting. I spent this weekend up in Cambridgeshire and managed to go to Brutable Beers in Bury St Edmunds, one of the best beer shops I've ever been to and it's got a little home brewing department as well so you can see what hops look like and what sort of equipment you need to get brewing at home, which I plan to do in the new year. I crossed a few more Cambridge pubs off my list and managed to try a pint of Speta Lager, which we talked about last week in the Champions of Industry. I also got my hands on a really nice IPA from the Hard Knot Brewery in Cumbria. It was called the Azimuth IPA. The thing you've got with it is it was really sessionable, which you don't really get with an IPA unless they really weaken it down. And this one still have packets of flavor. Packets of flavor? Ba bags of flavor. Bags of flavor. Bags of flavor. This had loads of bags of flavor. <laughs> Today, pint size, because I'm poorly, I'm gonna do something a little bit different to the standard Wikipedia stuff. I'm gonna throw a list at you. Today we're doing my top five Cambridge pubs. Cambridge is a great place to drink. There's a bunch of other stuff too. Harry Potter University. Number five. Number five on my list is the King Street Run. This is also the name of a biannual pub crawl which runs along King Street. It goes from the Cambridge Brew House to the King Street Run to the Champion of the Thames and the St Radigand. It used to be between about eight and ten pubs and it was all about the quickest time that you could have a pint in each and finish. Anyone today that does it under an hour gets a tie and a hangover. And a kidney, and a kidney failure. The quickest time so far for those four pubs is 14 minutes and five seconds. The pub itself is hardly the craft beer centre of the world and is probably the best place for tourists to go looking for a nice British pub. But the interior and the atmosphere is just immense. It's like this sort of rock and roll bikery that has got random stuff hanging off the wall. There's a pirate ship, you've got bar billiards, pool, and a bunch of TVs. It's really, really cool. Leave the King Street run and turn right and walk to the end of King Street, you get to the St. Radigand. Number four. The top of King Street is the St. Radigand. It's the smallest pub in Cambridge, but that doesn't really matter. There's not many tables, which means that you're probably going to be standing up which is pretty cool because there are a bunch of candle signatures on the ceiling from past notable guests. They serve beer from the local Cambridgeshire Milton Brewery and a bunch of cool lagers. And on Friday nights, apparently, they have a Vera Lynn Appreciation Society where they serve large G&Ts and play lots of Vera Lynn songs like this. Heard them ringing No, I never heard them at all <coughs> Number three. Number three is the Kingston Arms on Kingston Street. It's still pretty small and it's quite narrow and it's got quite a good garden. But the best thing about it, it's got about 10 real ales that rotate really regularly. It's also got a recession menu with five pound main meals and really cheap pints every week. Number two. Number two is the Geldert on Ainsworth Street. Again, it's got a bunch of regularly rotating, quite unusual ales and some pretty cool standard lagers. They also serve unusual meats. These are served on hot rocks, so they sort of arrive semi-raw and cook while you're looking at them. But these can range from like kangaroo and crocodile and antelope and beef. That last one's pretty crazy. Beef. Number one. Number one best pub all time of ever in Cambridge is the Cambridge Blue. What a pub. What a pub. So you go in, right in front of you is a fridge, probably about 250, 300 Belgian beers in. The fridges are double-ended, so you find the one you want and you go to the bar and the barman can get it from that side. So you don't have all that awkward rigmarole of, um, can I have the one with the label with the little monk and he's drinking a beer? That's all of them, sir. Um, uh, love Fosters, please. It's also got about eight or nine cracking real ales, and some pretty weird ones that you probably may not have heard of. And it's got some pretty cool lagers as well. This is the place where this weekend I had a pint of Speta for five pound a pint. <clears throat> pretty worth it for a glass of hot pea water. Mm. We've got a vast array of American and German beers and a really knowledgeable staff that are really nice as well and they can tell you all about their whiskies, their rums, their gins, their beers, anything. It's just a great place to go. It's got a brilliant garden which backs onto a graveyard. Boo! <laughs> 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 That's all from Bite Size today. I hope you enjoyed it. The next few episodes are a bit touch and go depending on whether my throat wants to talk to you. But for now, that's time at the bar.
time at the bar. Is that now a thing? Oh, oh well. Hope you enjoyed watching today's episode of Pint Size. If you want to comment in the section below all about your favourite pubs or the ones you think I should go to, then please feel free. And don't forget to subscribe. Here's a couple of episodes here for you to watch as well. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. There's a big old wasp in here. There's a big old wasp in here.